Yes, I know that you're whining. Teddy, let's talk to your friends. We're going to talk about recovery tools today. You ready, you ready to talk about recovery tools? Yeah. Yeah. No, not your heated bed that you spend 22 hours in. No. No, not that. Why, hello there, endurance nerds. If you've ever stared down at your beat-up legs after a race and thought, hmm, I wonder if turning into a human sausage casing for 20 minutes would help? Congratulations. You're already ahead of 99% of the recovery content on TikTok. But today we're tackling compression boots, those glorious zip-up sleeves that promise to flush your muscles, boost your circulation, and make your doms disappear like your dignity after mile 20. You've seen them on pro cyclists, marathoners, crossfitters, and that one guy in your gym who always looks like he's prepping for a moon landing. But are they actually worth the hype, or are they another overpriced placebo with a power cord? A good question. Let's find out. Spoiler, it's complicated, but in a good way. So let's start with what compression boots actually do. Technically speaking, these are intermittent pneumatic compression devices. Translation, they squeeze your legs in waves, usually starting at your feet and moving on upward. This mimics your natural muscle pump, that thing that helps push blood and lymphatic fluid back toward your heart when you're, you know, moving. Only this time, you get to lie on the couch while it happens. So yes, they do help circulation, at least mechanically. Studies suggest that this type of external pressure increases venous return, which is a fancy way of saying that it gets the used up blood and waste products out of your limbs, moving towards your trunk so that your heart can send in a nice fresh supply. If you've ever felt like your legs were full of molasses the day after hard intervals, this is the mechanism that might actually explain why compression boots feel good and not just because they make you feel like a tech savvy athlete who knows what lymphatic drainage means. Some people describe it like a massage. Others say it's like being hugged by a robot who went to PT school. Both are probably accurate. But now the real question, do they work? And this is where things get more nuanced, or as I like to call it, frustratingly inconclusive. The first question that comes up is, do these boots reduce muscle damage? A lot of people will use them for doms, that familiar, tender, I've made a mistake feeling that you get 24 to 48 hours after doing something heroic and really stupid with your legs. But the evidence here is underwhelmingly mixed. Several studies show that you have reduced perceived soreness, so subjectively people do feel better, but blood markers like creatine kinase show no difference. And now that doesn't mean it's useless, but it does mean the effect might be neural or circulatory rather than repairing the actual damage. So you're saying they're placebo then? Possibly, but remember the placebo effect is an effect. If you believe it helps and it gets you to rest and recover more effectively, that still counts as a win. And the physiological mechanisms like improved circulation are at least somewhat verifiable, which brings us to their impact on lactate clearance. Now, this is where the science gets a little bit more promising. Some studies have indicated that compression boots might help to speed up the clearance of blood lactate after a hard session, showing that they outperform passive rest. However, active recovery, like spinning your legs easily or taking a walk, still tends to win the prize here. That is where those more practical implications come into play. If your plan was to lie in bed motionless after your 12 by 400 meter repeats, yes, boots are better. If you can walk your dog or ride the trainer lightly for 15 minutes, then you might already be ahead. There really isn't a right or wrong answer here. It's about when and where you can effectuate the recovery process. So with that in mind, do they improve next day performance? And this is where things get more murky. A few small studies have suggested small performance benefits, especially in high frequency training blocks or multi-day events. But the benefits are rarely dramatic. You're not gonna PR because you spent 30 minutes getting squeezed like a tube of toothpaste. More likely, you'll come into your next session feeling slightly less trashed. And if you're stacking fatigue across multiple days or weeks, that can be significant. But what about being more proactive? Can they mitigate injury or overtraining as a part of a routine? And for this one, I actually found no evidence. They don't directly reduce injury risk, but indirectly, if they help you to stick to your training plan without crashing into a fatigue wall, you could argue that they have a role. Just don't expect them to replace sleep, nutrition, or smart programming. Recovery tech is the garnish, not the main course. And that brings us to the inevitable question. Are compression boots just for elites, or do they actually make sense for the rest of us? And sure, pros are known for chasing every single marginal gain, trying to squeeze out that last 1% that might mean the difference between a podium finish and being off the back at their level. But here's the thing, they're already doing everything else right. Dial the nutrition, daily massage, perfectly timed naps, cryotherapy chambers, you name it. Basically a small army devoted to making sure that their legs feel like velvet. You on the other hand, well you're probably training three to six days a week, juggling a job, occasionally skipping cool downs because your kid needs a ride and eating protein bars in the parking lot. And that's why you might actually get more of a benefit out of compression boots than they do. Not because they're magic, but because they might fill a few recovery gaps that you actually have. A tool that encourages rest, improves circulation, and gets you off your feet, that's not a marginal gain. It might be the only gain that you have that day. But let's talk practical application, because knowing how to use these things matters almost as much as owning them. How long, how often, how hard, all great questions. And like most things in endurance sports, the answer is, it depends. But here's what the science and the real world experience suggest. First, duration. 
Most studies use compression sessions anywhere between about 15 and 30 minutes. This isn't just a convenient Netflix episode. It's the window where circulation improvements and perceived recovery benefits tend to show up. More anecdotally, many athletes land around that 20 minutes as the feels just right mark. Go longer if you like the sensation and you're multitasking, but once you start creeping past 45 minutes, the science shows that you're not gaining much. At that point, it's more about the vibe than the value, and if your idea of recovery involves a full hour of compression while doom scrolling through Instagram, well, you do you. Now, what about frequency? After a hard session or a race is really the most obvious and most effective time. That's when your legs are the most beat up, circulation is sluggish, and a little mechanical help makes the biggest impact. That said, using them daily if you have the time and the budget, it's not really overkill, but it isn't altogether necessary either. Think of it like a protein powder. Great when you need it, but nobody's asking you to drink six shakes a day. And no, you're not sabotaging your gains by skipping boot time after an easy spin or your weekly stroll disguised as a recovery run. And that brings us to pressure settings. The overwhelming recommendation here is to start very low and to ease your way up. This is not a blood pressure contest. More pressure does not in any way mean more benefit, especially if it feels like your legs are about to tap out via Morse code. Excessive pressure can actually reduce arterial flow, which is the exact opposite of what we're going for here. So aim for firm, not suffocating. Think solid handshake, not a python auditioning for Cirque du Soleil. And finally, timing. Should you use them right after your workout or wait until later? And there's really no hard and fast rule here, but immediate post-exercise use really makes the most intuitive sense. Your body is still in that recovery window and circulation is a key player. That said, using them later after you've showered, your meal, and your existential post-session nap, that's totally fine, especially if your legs feel heavy or swollen, or maybe you just want to relax before bed. The boots don't stop working after a certain window, and unlike ice baths or recovery shakes, they really don't have a strict expiry on usefulness. Think of them more like a recovery bonus round. Helpful whenever, especially if you need a little help hitting pause. Now, I'll take a second to share my own personal experience with them. I own a mid-range pair that I've used over the years, and to be abundantly clear, my use is not in any way consistent or a model that provides a ton of probative information. But I have used them after sessions that have left my legs feeling kind of like cement stuffed gym socks. And when I'm dealing with heavy legs after lactate heavy intervals or after waking up feeling like every stair or trip to the bathroom is a death march, they do help. Not magic, but noticeable. Almost like a good warm up that turns my stubborn legs into something more functional. For me, Dom's is murkier though. I don't notice a huge acute impact to something like tenderness, but I do think it does help to offset some of that leg locking sensation that you get when muscles get cold. And they might also confer a small benefit to my recovery time through circulatory benefits, but Dom's for me is so inconsistent in time and severity, it's really hard to know for sure. What I do know is that forced rest helps. When I zip into those boots, I'm not cleaning the kitchen or pacing around, I'm off my feet. That matters. The parasympathetic nervous system likes when you chill out, and so do my legs. My sweet spot is somewhere around 20 minutes. It's the time that I can reliably commit to while going through some emails or maybe watching a couple of videos, and it feels like the sweet spot for an effective dose. Beyond that, I haven't really experimented enough to say that more time and more frequency would make more benefit, but if you've got the time and they're not interfering with other recovery tools in your life, I actually don't see them as marketing hype. So let's say that you're ready to take the plunge. What should you actually be looking for in a pair of compression boots? Because while a lot of them might look the same, not all boots are created equal. Some are really thoughtfully designed tools while others are basically overhyped blood pressure cuffs with a PR team. So here's what matters and doesn't without really getting lost in the marketing nonsense about quantum lymphatic harmonization or some other senseless bullshit invented in a CrossFit sauna. First, Sequential compression is non-negotiable. You want that gradual wave-like inflation that starts from your feet and moves upward. Not the entire sleeve squeezing at once like it's trying to juice your femur. That wave mimics the natural muscle pump and does more for circulation than a one-size-fits-all squeezing. Any worthwhile pair of boots will have that mode. Next, you want to find adjustable pressure levels. What might feel like a gentle hug to one person can feel like an industrial grade limb obliteration to another. The ability to fine tune intensity based on your insensitivity, muscle fatigue, or whether you actually want to keep your legs attached, worth it. Then there's session control. If the device doesn't let you pick your time or it shuts off after 10 minutes like a nervous chihuahua, just skip it. Anything under 15 minutes is basically a placebo nap and going beyond 45, not necessarily harmful, but you're probably at the point of diminishing returns unless you're just vibing with your legs in the air like a reclining astronaut. But if like most people, you want these things to just do their action in the background, you wanna be able to set it and forget it for the time that you're looking for. Portability is another factor that you might wanna look out for, especially if you travel for races or just like the idea of post-ride compression while you scroll through race photos wondering why your bib number looks like it was applied by a toddler. Some boots come in sleek rechargeable setups and others, well, you're hauling around a suitcase with a power cord thick enough to jumpstart a truck. Friction matters when you're trying to implement a habit or a routine. So you want to pick the device that you'll actually want to use, not the one that will become a paperweight in the corner of the closet that you hope no one ever looks inside. But now the question that no one wants to admit to asking, do you need the fancy ones? No. 
you need functional ones. A solid basic pair with sequential compression, pressure control, and a decent power source will do the job. Everything beyond that, mobile apps, customizable zones, RGB lighting for reasons unknown, it's all icing. You're paying for convenience, brand name, and often aesthetics. And if you see terms like nanopulse tech or infrared vascular optimization, just assume someone got a little bit too creative in the marketing brainstorm. Spend wisely. Don't cheap out so far that you're basically buying inflatable leg warmers, but also don't assume that the $1,300 version is going to heal your trauma and shave 10 minutes off your Ironman. Get what works. Ignore the glitter. So bottom line, are compression boots worth it? If you're looking for a miracle cure, no. If you think they'll replace your cool down, proper sleep, decent fueling, and the mysterious art of not doing dumb shit in training, definitely no. But if you're an endurance athlete trying to stay consistent, feel better between sessions, and buy yourself a few moments of stillness in a life that doesn't always offer it, then yes, compression boots might be worth your time, your money, or at the very least your curiosity. They won't make you faster overnight, but they might help you to come back to training feeling a little more human. And in the sport of doing hard things day after day, that's not nothing. So get the boots or don't, but definitely don't get the ones with Bluetooth aromatherapy and a payment plan that lasts longer than your last base phase. But if you learned something or at least laughed once, smash that like button, Drop a comment with your experience and subscribe for more endurance content that doesn't take itself too seriously. Unless we're talking about recovery. That's serious. It's still a little funny. But thank you guys all so much for watching. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.